to the 805 Focus, where we focus on the events, topics, and people that matter to the South Coast. I'm your host, Dominique Samario. With May being National Bike Month, we have two very special guests with us. Please welcome Kent Epperson from SV CAG Traffic Solutions and Ed France from the Santa Barbara Bicycle Coalition. Thank you both for being here. Thank you, Dominique. Thanks. So I'd like to start out with a little bit of full disclosure. Um, I actually love biking. I've done everything from bike races, bike touring, you'll probably see me around town biking to run my errands or biking to work. Mm. But what I really want to focus on is the impact that biking has on our community for both those who do bike, but also those who don't. Um, before we can get to where we are now and maybe where we're going in the future, I'd love to learn a, bit, a little bit about our history. I've always thought of Santa Barbara County as a very, you know, bike friendly and bike full region. So tell me a little bit about that history. Yeah, well, our weather and our topography just make for an incredible place to bicycle. And a lot of uh, renowned cyclists, including Lance Armstrong, has ac actually uh, recognized that and has created kind of a reputation for Santa Barbara County. And it, we actually have a number of racing um, uh, training camps that actually take place in Santa Barbara County because we have you know, very steep terrain. We also have some county roads that are uh, not, uh, not a lot of traffic on them. The weather year round is perfect, so it's a great place for bicycling from a racing standpoint. We have the San Inez Valley, Figueroa Mountain, the Gubernador Canyon, Gibraltar. Yep. I have a love-hate relationship with a lot of those rides. You just <laughs> <laughs> you feel great when you finish, not yeah. so much going up, but but yeah. no, it is. It's a great area to train, and you also have. I mean, I've always thought beautiful views. People want to be outside biking, right? I mean, that's what yep. I would think. Yeah, so. I think I think that the statistics, if you look at the number of trips that are made on average by bicycle, indicate that it is a bicycle-friendly community. We actually have 10 times as many bike trips than the national average. So on really? average in the nation, about 0.5% of all trips are made by bicycle. But in Santa Barbara, it's actually about 6.4% of all trips are made by bike. Wow, so people are biking anytime they want to go leave to go somewhere. 6.4% of those times, they're choosing to take a bike. Exactly. Wow. Yeah, and that's um, basically a result of the infrastructure that we've invested in over the last few decades. Santa Barbara has traditionally been a progressive, bike-friendly city. We've invested in Bath and Castillo. We've invested in bike lanes on Upper State Street, Jameson, connecting you know, throughout the South Coast. And as a result, you, know, you build it and they will come. Uh, in fact, we've been one of the first uh, League of American Bicyclists, Bicycle Friendly Cities with a silver rating. Wow. Um, but we've actually, uh, we haven't kept pace with some of the leading bicycle cities such as Seattle, San Francisco, New York, Minneapolis. Um, we, have, we have to kind of look at the next stage and start to catch up. That's, that's an important thing. I mean, we kind of know where we came from. And I think because we started to take pride in that we were a great place to bike, that infrastructure and also the people started to be drawn here. So where are we now? That's kind of what brought us to this place, but where, where are we? Can, can you speak to that? Well, one thing I think it's important to note is that these uh, improvements, the bike paths, bike lanes, mm -hmm. bike parking, uh, they take time. They take time to plan. They take time to fund and then to build. You really need to be looking out about 10 years into the future. And we had a great bicycle master plan in 1998, but now it's, it's uh, kind of the shelf life has is, is reached its time. And so we really need to be looking forward and looking at these other communities that have uh, really raised the bar in terms of what really makes a community bicycle friendly. I mean, fundamentally, there's um, infrastructure that is kind of foreign to us that some of these leading cities that I've mentioned have taken on, such as bicycle boulevards through residential streets. What, is, what does that mean? I don't so, know. So basically, if you're trying to get through a residential street, is there a suggested route? I mean, a lot of people try to get on a bike and they have no idea what street they should take. Right. And actually have signed routes where they plan to make sure that it is safe for a cyclist. There's not intersections that are dangerous to cross. Got it. And there's less vehicle traffic. And there's bike bridges when it crosses a creek or whatever it might be. Also even, you know, there's things called green lanes where in downtown areas they actually have separated bike paths. I mean, even on kind of main streets like in New York or even down in Long Beach. Um, different ways that not just the more competitive cyclists, but your average everyday citizen 
can feel safe getting on a bike and riding to where they need to go. I mean, I think something about what you were saying, for instance, I was thinking about that, um, did you call it like a, the green lane? So they're kind of separate from the busy traffic. That actually makes me think of the fact that um, I, I guess I can call myself a cyclist, but you know, I, I bike a lot. But I have a feeling that if I'm separated from the cars, I'm actually making the cars feel better because I know as a driver, it sort of stresses me out and I'm thinking, I don't want to hit anybody and I got to be careful or do they need to turn? Do they have enough space? Is there debris on the road? So, I mean, I feel like some of these improvements, are they also helping people who aren't on bikes? Absolutely. I mean, one, one way to look at it is as we have more people biking to where they need to go, you look at safe, statistically, we look at the safety of streets as we see increase in bicyclists and pedestrians it becomes safer for everyone involved, including the motorists. Really? So like, is that like less car crashes maybe or something it, Exactly. Like that? I mean, basically what it, what it is is everyone's paying more attention. Mm -hmm. In residential streets, people start to slow down. They're not driving over 25 right. miles an hour because they can feel they can just, you know, cruise through. Um, also, as you get more cyclists, you're reducing trips and you're reducing congestion, right? That's and uh, when we talk about peak hour trips, we're reducing the traffic jams that are causing a lot of frustration. There's kind of a reason why when people think about a livable, healthy community, they always will visualize a lot of pedestrians, a lot of bicyclists, kids playing on the streets. And as we start improving our bicycle infrastructure, and, and that also includes sidewalks, I mean, this is all kind of multimodal, it just creates an environment that people want to live in. That's what actually, and Santa Barbara really has a lot of those qualities already, but it, it does mean that you continue making that investment. I think I see what you're saying. It's not we're just for biking, we're just for driving, we're just for walking or for kids. It's about making them all work together. And maybe that's yeah. the most successful plan is when they're all doing well. Absolutely. Making bicycling accessible. We're not trying to make everybody bike. It's not always the right tool for the job. If you're going on a longer trip, often you just need to drive and that's what you should do. But if you're going on a shorter trip, you should feel safe getting on your bike to go to a store you know, half a mile down the road. Yeah, I mean, I think that what you guys are talking about right now is exactly because um, it's really a key point because th I was thinking to myself, you know, there are going to be people watching right now who say, I don't ever want to, nor will I, nor maybe can I. I'm never going to get on the bike. I'm not going to be pushing the pedals, you know. Um, why should I care? Why is it still good for me? But I think some of these concepts is what you're saying. It is good for them. Absolutely. A lot of people are never going to take on biking, and that's fine, right? But we are looking to take care of problems of congestion, right. CO2 emissions, right? Obesity. We have sedentary lifestyles. It's something that we've just kind of gotten into, kind of as a typical American lifestyle. Mm -hmm. How can we make our day-to-day -day life more active? Part of that's active transportation. I mean, without even doing any sports or going to the gym or anything, I'm gonna get an hour of exercise every day just from biking where I need to go. And so how can we make that an option for people who would like to choose that? Yeah, that really makes sense. Did you have yeah, something Yeah, in, in addition, uh, you know, bicycling is actually good for business and good for the economy. They actually found that when you build bike paths, it actually improves the quality of life for, for, for people. It increases property values. Um, really? People, bicyclists, they actually find that they, they shop more often locally. And so they're supporting a lot of the mom and pop shops, these kind of small businesses, rather than going out to the suburbs and, and spending you know, money in these big box uh, retailers. So it's really good for the economy. When you think about it as a bicyclist, for instance, downtown Santa Barbara, I'd much rather be on a bike, go exactly where I want to go, just lock my bike outside. I'm going to spend my money on State Street rather than going to Ventura or somewhere else. And so it's actually good for the economy. No, I mean, I know I think about it. I'm going to hit all the errands that I want to go to because on my bike, it's so convenient. I have the best parking spot, you know, in town. But when I'm driving, I mean, I've actually thought about this. Where am I going to park? Mm -hmm. I don't want to go to three places because I don't want to get in and out of my car three times, right. you know? So, I mean, I could see that that's it's a great fact because I can see that that would be good for a business owner to consider as well. And also, I mean, I'm just guessing and maybe you can speak to this 
the health of an employee who shows up for work when they've had their physical activity. You know, I mean, less obesity, like you mentioned, that's going to lead to less sick days, less, you know, hospital visits. I mean, I just feel like it all really works together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fundamentally, when you have an active lifestyle, it's going to be easier for you to get through the day because you have um, kind of a better regular metabolism. In the morning, I don't need a cup of coffee, right? Just simply getting my body moving, right? I don't need to caffeinate and then kind of bonk later in the day. So maybe, maybe, just maybe, with a few of the tips and kind of facts that we've given viewers, somebody might be enticed to either try bicycling for the first time, or maybe they have a bike and it's just been a few years, it's sort of left their routine. What are some resources? What are some places they can go to find out more information? Well, I think that there, there are numerous uh, resources. One is your local bike shop, for one. If a lot of people have their bike sitting in their garage, it's gathered dust, flat tires, and that actually is a huge impediment. Believe it or not, when we Traffic Solutions uh, talk with potential bike commuters, they're like, oh yeah, my bike, but it's got a flat tire, and I, you know, it's like, there's a bike shop probably within blocks of where you live. Bring it in there, and they're a great resource. Um, but also, I think the, the SB Bike and the Bike Coalition is a great resource as well. Yeah, and we just opened a new facility actually in 506 East Haley, and we have kind of it's a community cycling center, and we also have a do-it-yourself community-run bike shop that we call BC Centro or Bike Center in Spanish. And so what can people what can people do there? Like, why would I um, show up and, and, and visit your place? Well, something that we'll mention kind of through Cyclemania um, and throughout the year, we have classes for adults um, in mechanics and also um, in kind of commuter confidence. So as an adult, you know how to ride a bike, but if you haven't ridden in traffic or if you're thinking about a commute and you're not exactly sure how you're going to do it with your stuff and which route you're going to take, we run a class that we've distilled over the last six or seven years so that in an evening and then on a Saturday ride, we can get you the confidence that you need to start biking. And what about, um, are there a lot of costs involved? Is it a low cost way? Because you know there are, there are costs to, to biking and certain gear or such, but are, are there ways that they can try to you know, minimize the impact? So our adult classes are basically free. I think we ask for a $10 cost just so people come after they register. That's great. <laughs> and we actually, the um, do-it-yourself bike repair actually started because we wanted to service the bicyclists who didn't necessarily have the financial means to go drop their bike off for bike repair. Because right. a lot of lower income folks rely on a bike every day for transportation. So how are they going to keep their bikes tuned up if they don't have the tools and, and materials? So we actually uh, take donations of used bike parts use bikes, we have pretty much all the tools you might need, and we just host an open shop, uh, basically Wednesday night through Saturday night, right, that people can drop in, and we will, with volunteer power, coach them through repairs that they need to make on their bike. And we've helped over 3,700 people make repairs on their bikes. 3,700? Yeah. I thought you were gonna stop at 37, <laughs> and I'm like, good job, keep it up, you know, but 3,700, that's a solid amount of community members. Yeah, we just celebrated our fifth anniversary of the shop. Oh, congratulations. What about, um, I think I've heard a bit of resources for maybe adults. Is there anything for um, youth in the community and really kind of creating the next generation? Yeah, there's actually a great um, array of, of bike education for, for kids. Uh, some of our programs are run by COAST, uh, the Coalition for Sustainable Transportation, and they have mm -hmm. what they call bicycle rodeos. And they actually put out cones and kind of a mock street and have the kids get on the bikes and just navigate uh, traffic and, and how you would you know, cross the street and how you would signal right and left. Um, so those take place at elementary schools. They also do uh, helmet giveaways. A lot of kids uh, and, and their parents don't have the resources to buy helmets and so they have low cost helmets that, that they sell at those events as well. But then kind of moving on as, as kids get a little bit older into junior high and high school, then you need to get them out on the street and actually pa uh, practice bi bicycling with a, an instructor, someone that actually is a trained to teach kids how to ride bicycles. And yeah. SB Bike and Bike Coalition actually has a great, a great program, Pedal Power. Exactly. It's kind of like a pre-driver's training. Because these are kids who are already going to go out on the road, but they haven't done driver's ed, and they have the same rights and responsibilities as motorists. That's right. So we actually have kind of an intensive class. It's an 18-hour after-school program. We've graduated over 200 kids, and we've actually worked with over 200 kids at Santa Barbara High School. 
as well. Um, we're trying to educate kids so that they can be safe cyclists. Um, you know, we, want, we care about their safety and we also care about them being able to feel comfortable biking, you know, learning that behavior early on so that they can have that for the future. And we actually have a short video about this uh, really incredible youth program. So let's take a quick look. What I like the best about pedal power is going on all the rides because I can feel the wind running through my face. It just it feels exciting and new. Play games, go on bike rides, hang with friends, and this bike is awesome. And I think it's really cool to get me a lock because I need a lock and I don't have one. And I would totally suggest this to my friends because it's super awesome. And you get this cool light. So we're talking about uh, resources for the community, but I hear there's a new resource coming out. Can you tell me about that? Well, it's actually not a new resource. Actually, uh, oh. Traffic Solutions has produced the countywide bike map since uh, the early 90s. And I have one. You have one, actually. Yes. What, what um, am I saying? Yeah, and they're yeah. a great map. It's a countywide map. And um, we actually, we update it periodically about every three years. We update it because there's, there are new bike paths or bike lanes that right. we need to update the map. And so we're just now updating the map again. And um, we've added some new features to the map. Um, it's very exciting. It's actually a nicer map overall. We have topography on the map, which we didn't have before. We actually have a listing of all the bike shops as well. Oh, um, but this, this map is a great resource. It's something that you can kind of just carry around, as, especially as a beginning bicyclist. Keep it in your backpack because it has tips for riding. It also has rules of the road. It has instructions how you load your bicycle on, say, an MTD bus or on Amtrak. Oh, that's helpful. That's yeah, really, and it's, it's the first time is always the scariest, right? You it know, is, exactly. Unsure of yourself. Um, also, there's a listing of phone numbers you would call if there's a hazard on the road, if there's a pothole or debris on a bike path, that sort of thing. So it's a great resource. This time, for the first time ever, we're actually um, doing a, a smartphone application for it. So iPhones and Android compatible smartphone application for the Santa Barbara County bike map. And what's really nice about it, it has two additional features. One, obviously, all the hot links uh, to websites and phone numbers make it really easy for you to call a bike shop or call those resources that I mentioned before. Um, but it also has the ability to track trips. So you can track your favorite rides and it gives you stats like your average um, speed and the distance and the time um, mm -hmm. all kind of to, to record that. Eventually, we'll have new versions of this application. You'll be able to share those rides with other people and kind of get the viral thing going on as well. But it's a great resource. Um, these maps will be available for purchase for the first time. They used to be free, and now they are a purchased item uh, for $2.95 at bike shops, but the smartphone application will be available for free. 
It's really a resource that I think that will come in handy. I love on the smartphone, you know, so you're out and about, and you need to know the best route or a place to fix your flat tire. <laughs> yeah, it's so important to choose the right route. Exactly. I mean, I've talked to so many bicyclists who've, you know, only taken Hollister and State Street and have just been unaware that there is a separated bike path on the creek, you know, the Oburn Trail going the whole way out to Goleta. Um, and the quality of your ride is going to improve just so much mm -hmm. if you choose the right route. And the map is really helpful. It calls out separated bikeways where there's a bike lane on the street, and then also quieter residential streets that are recommended because there's not as much traffic and um, it's, it's a safer route to choose. Definitely make people feel a little bit more comfortable. Um, so some other things that might get people excited about cycling, and even like we were talking about, doesn't have to be that you want to get on a bike, but you just want to encourage it for the health, overall health of your community. There are a lot of fun events going on throughout the month of May for Cycle Mania, mm -hmm. which is such a clever <laughs> name. I mean, I love that. You guys voted on that, right? Isn't Actually, that yeah, that name came from the community. We had a contest and we had someone that came up with that brilliant name. So, yeah, Cycle Mania in the month of May. We actually have about 30 events that um, really cater to any kind of bicycling, whether you're into mountain biking, whether you're a kid wanting to ride to school, uh, whether you want to ride, ride to work, um, road riding, movies, uh, presentations, classes put on by the SB bike. So there's really something for everyone. And a lot of these events are actually events um, and, and rides that are put on by the community. They're, they're not yeah. government saying, yeah, you want this event and this event would be cool. These are ideas that individuals in the community said, yeah, I want to do an event where we do X, Y, and Z. And so they do it themselves. We give them a little bit of grant money, we call mini grants, to just pay for the basic costs, but then they actually put on these events. And then we mark it under the name Cyclomania. Uh, but some of the example of some of the events, uh, one of the big ones that we uh, that actually happens all month long is called the Bike Challenge, and that's a really fun event. It's um, a friendly competition where five individuals friendly competition. Friendly, I know. What is it's, that? It's Do an oxymoron. Some take it more serious. Than <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's true. Exactly. Well, we know the competition motivates people, right? So we created this fun. Um, competition where you, you form a team with five individuals, friends, family members, coworkers, whatever, and you see how many days you can ride during the month of May. And the more you ride, the more points you earn, and the more you can go head to head competing with other teams. And what's new um, the last couple years is it's actually a fundraiser for five really great programs. And so as you earn more points, and if you rank uh, high on the, on the ranking, you get to choose what you spend your prize dollars on for, for a charity, for a local program, a nonprofit program. That's so great. it's a feel good, it, it, it um, you know, reinvests into our community, and it's just a great excuse to get on your bike as much as possible. So that's one thing that I encourage people to do, and that, that starts May 1st, and you register on our Traffic Solutions website, trafficsolutionsonline.info. And there are things all month, though, too, right? Yeah, and then we have, uh, for example, the Velo Vogue Bicycle Fashion Show, and that's our kickoff event. And actually, Dominique, you are our MC this year for the Excited for, the for this? Fashion yes. Show. I definitely love fashion and cycling, so putting we, them together is And you is. are the embodiment of what we call bicycle chic, because you <laughs> ride your bicycle around, dressed to the nines, looking very professional, and you still ride around. And that's what that's really what the Velo Vogue Bicycle Fashion Show is all about, is, um, is really portraying bicycling. It's not just about wearing Lycra, it, it, it can exactly. actually, you can look good and you can feel good and be comfortable in the clothing. There's a whole new line of clothing wear out there, active lifestyle wear, and some that's specifically tailored to bicycling. And they have um, reflective material that are in the designs. It's great. They, they're, they're stretchy so that, and they're, they're breathable, and yet they look really great. So we'll be featuring those as well as, you know, a great array of bicycles from cargo bicycles to you know, really neat, you know, mountain bikes and uh, road uh, bicycles, uh, just the whole gamut, some really interesting bikes. And that, that will be fun, some live music, a little bit of beer in there as well. And that will happen at Paseo Nuevo Mall. So that, that will be a great kickoff event. I hear there's gonna be a great after party for that too. <laughs> that's right, actually there's the Bike Moves ride that happens right after that. That's the monthly ride that and happens. And that's ongoing. Right? That's ongoing, so every single month. Even if they month. miss yep. it in May, it's every month, right? Yep, and, and each, each ride has a, a costume theme. And this, this month in May is Bike Prom. 
So, you know, pull out your, your old prom dresses there's, and your tuxedos. There's nothing like biking in a tux. <laughs> <laughs> Which uh, my husband actually has done because we biked away from our wedding. There you go. See? So, nice. I think you may actually be both maybe models in this year's uh, Maybe as well. we'll bike maybe away we'll in a wedding dress. We'll see. But what about, there's actually um, a really neat a movie premiere going on as well, Yeah, right? really fun event. Um, two uh, local filmmakers um, who actually are, have their production company called Pedalborn Pictures. Uh, they made um, With My Own Two Wheels that was in the film festival two years ago. Yes, I and, saw that. I saw yeah. that in the film festival. That's amazing. And, and they're back and they've been screening uh, this great new film. It's called Single Track High. And it's actually a documentary tracking this emerging sport that is high school level competitive mountain biking. And it's really cool that this, you know, basically 30, 40 year phenomenon is now becoming a legitimate high school sport. And you can get your varsity letter in, uh, in mountain biking. And uh, it's actually through uh, support through Montecito Bank and Trust, Tobes Group, and other sponsors, we've been able to run this screening as a fundraiser to get a trailer and a fleet of bikes that we can use for our school programs and also uh, trips taking kids out to, to local trails so we can kind of further spread the joy of mountain biking and and basically the joy of biking. So there are actually uh, bike events throughout the south coast. We have a ride in Carpinteria, the Beach to Bluffs bike ride. That's going to be a great one. We have Bike to School Day put on by Coast. Uh, we also have, of course, the Amgen Tour that's happening during during the month as well. A great a great event to, to attend. And then we have Bike to Work uh, breakfast basically every single wednesday we have a bike to work breakfast and at the very end we have a galita event the bike challenge awards and barbecue and that'll be really fun at the city hall over at, at, at city of galita that's perfect i mean such a fun way to celebrate biking and the impact it plays on our entire community and and with that i sort of want to close with that bigger picture um the impact like we've talked about is not just on people who bike it's on the entire community as a whole, business members, people who drive, and people right. who just want to have a healthy community. So what can you tell me sort of on that bigger picture? Well, if we want to reduce congestion, if we want to reduce our CO2 impact, if we want to become more of an active community with a vibrant downtown, um, biking is an essential element. We have a vision in the future that a majority of all trips will include a bicycle. That might be biking to the bus, that might be biking down to the store. But that's something that we've seen in other communities in Europe. We've even seen that in our own community out there at the UCSB campus in Isla Vista. And that's not just a student thing. There are communities that have a majority of all trips that include a bicycle. And we think that's something that we can bring to our community as we continue to be a leading city. And I, of course, have to do the plug. The Bike Coalition is, is dedicated to this vision, and uh, we hope that cyclists and even people who are aspiring cyclists would join us and become members or become active with the events that we have. You can check it all out at sbbike.org. So leave, leave the viewers with something, some, some fact. I feel like I've gotten so many great tidbits of information from resources to uh, facts about the impact on our community uh, as a whole. But is there anything else? Did, did you give me all your good stuff? Do you have anything else that you want to leave people with when they just consider you know, the role that bicycling plays and maybe whether or not they'll take a bike for their next trip? Some great research that's available now, um, which is just so fun. I love this. <laughs> for every hour that you bike, you add more than an hour to your average expected healthy lifespan. Wow. So. It might take you an hour and you're going to enjoy it and you're adding more than an hour to your lifespan. I mean, it's kind of amazing. If and that's, that doesn't encourage you, I, right? I mean, that's an amazing There is fact. a benefit for active lifestyles. There's a lot of benefits. And as we've talked about today, it's really benefiting everyone in the community. Right. So on that note, a great note, um, I want to thank you both again. Thank you both so much for being here. And you can always watch all of our shows on our website at tvsb.tv. Thank you for joining us for the 805 Focus, where we focus on the events, topics, and people that matter to the South Coast. We look forward to seeing you next time. <laughs>